Sister Sharon and I had the dubious privilege of spending a week that summer of 2005 helping pack or dispose of 40 plus years of my elderly parents' belongings. For the third day in a row, we carry, roll, and drag boxes, old furniture, and garbage bags from the house to the car in scorching August heat. This stuff is for Goodwill, and this is for the dump, my mother orders, pointing for the umpteenth time to the piles she deliberately sorted. She begins poking through open boxes I had neatly packed, ready to be closed and labeled. My irritation evident, I plead, please, please, Mom, those are done. We really need to work on the kitchen stuff. Ugh, I know, my mother snaps. Throwing up her hand, she turns her back to me and continues to rifle through the carefully organized items. I whisper to Sharon, what the hell? My sister shrugs and bolts out the back door, cigarette lit before the door slams shut. My mother faces me and in her signature staccato indicating annoyance commands. The attic. You must get it done today. I wonder, had mom figured out that Sharon and I never actually went to Goodwill? That we decided it was just easier to take everything to the dump? Was the attic my ultimate punishment? I stomp away. In an upstairs bedroom closet, I yank open the narrow, pull down steps, leading to the rafters of the house. Stifling heat envelops me. Cobwebs and dust swirl in slow motion above the curtains strewn about in the cramped space. Trip after trip, I haul the attic contents down two flights of stairs, plopping each filthy box on the floor in the kitchen where my mother is haphazardly emptying cabinets and quite effectively ignoring me. I stumble on the bottom attic step, spilling the contents of a box across the bedroom floor. In the mess is a large old-fashioned cookie tin. I open it and sift through the contents. Odd buttons, a rusty brooch, and a wad of yellow documents. As I examine the papers, it dawns on me that I am holding pieces of my mother's life. There are her travel documents from Belfast to America in 1956, arriving with two young daughters after reuniting and reuniting with her husband after two and a half years apart. There are sad telegrams from Ireland. Her mother died, then her brother died. There are old fashioned savings passbooks Evidence of her endless struggles to save money. Always, as she'd say, robbing Peter to pay Paul. A crumpled letter dated January 1971 from a desperately poor single mother in our neighborhood. The woman thanks my mom for the toys and food she sent for the holidays. I can't help but chuckle. Leave it to my mom to make sure a couple of Jewish kids have a Merry Christmas. There is an old payment booklet with neatly notated stubs in my mother's handwriting. All payments to the Singer Sewing Center. $10 a month for 10 months, beginning in December 1973. Oh God, I whisper. That was the Christmas I begged incessantly for a Jeannie Singer sewing machine. A lot of the popular girls made their own clothes back then, even the captain of the cheerleading team. From the time I was in sixth grade, I dreamed of being popular, and at 15 still stood on the outer rings of that exalted clique. I had believed that sewing machine was the answer to all my sophomore 
back in the kitchen, I put the kettle on for tea. Mom is asleep in a stuffed chair in the corner. I kneel down at her side and gently shake her awake. Attic's empty, I say. What do you need me to do next?